three out of 17 have attended uh, uh, Rachel, I see you, Michael Darko, Jermaine. Uh, great, I see all those hands. By a show of hands, who has uh, failed an interview they've attended before? Who has failed an interview they've attended before? In Jerusalem, I see you. I have failed a number of interviews myself. Fumbani, I see you. My Milky, I see you. Rachel, I see you. This is good. Beza, Harriet, great. So we'll just go around the room first of all. What is your theory as to why you failed that interview? And we will start with a Jerusalem and Michael Darko. You guys can go first. So uh, yeah, what's your theory why you failed that interview? Okay, uh, it's just uh, on the interview. Uh, mm -hmm. Omar. First of all, hi everyone. <laughs> I forgot to say that. <laughs> it's just that I felt on Microsoft uh, software engineering uh, interview. Uh, the point is, first, I don't see the requirements. That is, they require, as, uh, like, for example, if there is a, if they want a software engineering, uh, they want us to be proficient in those and those uh, things. So, at the time, I was a fourth year student, so I didn't, uh, I didn't just uh, complete all the requirements. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first thing, mm -hmm. uh, and also my profile, uh, that is my CV, mm -hmm. everything wasn't um, uh, mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. so I think it's the requirement that oh. led me to the, and also, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. also well, they want brief explanation mm -hmm. on what, so also, that's all those things led oh, me okay. to fill mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for sharing, Jerusalem. I will go to Milky. Why do you think you failed the interview you attended, Milky? Hi, good morning. Good morning, how are you today? You yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, I think it was not uh, about technical, uh, in a technical perspective. They were happy about my technical side, but they asked me what was my plan for um, the remain at for um for the future like five years mm -hmm. uh, i told them that i, I didn't want to stay uh, at my country and i wanted to go to the us or another country okay. <laughs> and wow, then, wrong move. <laughs> yeah, and they wanted a, a stable uh, employee that that will grow with the company with them and stay longer mm -hmm. so I think that's the reason that they didn't call me back. Okay, okay. Uh, now you know better, okay? Now you know better, especially when it comes to what people, what organizations, organizations' motivations when they're looking for an employee, yeah? They, it costs them money and it costs them time to do the whole onboarding and, and searching process. So uh, being able to play your cards better in future is a lesson that you learned there, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I didn't have to make something up, I thought, so it's better for them uh, and me as well. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so thank Thanks. you. Rachel, uh, you will go uh, last before we just jump right into it. What's your theory why you failed your interview? Whatever interview you attended that you did not succeed, what's your theory why you did not succeed? You're muted. Rachel, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I think the reason why I, I found the interview, uh, actually they were asking the were asking about the uh, internship. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the dyslexia. Mm -hmm. yeah, they they were they were telling us it's in an internship, but yeah. actually they wanted to, some workers to work with them. So mm -hmm. uh, I went there uh, just want to run about the coding things. So mm -hmm. uh, and they they finally gave us uh uh like a, a project where we were we were supposed to do on it and. Mm -hmm. And um, they discovered that uh, I did I didn't meet the expectations. Uh, okay. I didn't have the skills they wanted. Yeah, yeah. That, about okay. coding, and uh, I, I I asked them about. Uh, I, I thought that it was internship. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I just had one to also to run this. Oh, they told me no, that was not. Uh, we wanted people who know this, so mm -hmm. we can work together with mm -hmm. them. So that's okay. why they have rejected me. They didn't. Okay. Need, yeah. If I understand you correctly. They advertised for an internship, and you thought you were playing for an internship. But when you actually went there, they actually were not looking for interns. They were looking for people with a bit more experience and full time and all that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So one of the things that are important for all of us to realize is that most times organizations don't really know what they want. Okay. And that's such a sad situation because you're the one who takes your time to make a standard up uh, an incredible application. You show up, you show out, you, you want to do your best, but they're not even sure. What they, what they really want. What they have is what the title should be, the budgets they have for that position, and maybe a few of the things that would be nice for you to have, or maybe some critical things, okay? Uh, then the other challenge sometimes, a lot of times, is different organizations describe different roles differently, which means a product manager in charge of uh, maybe creating an API in Microsoft would require the description and, and what they need that person to have could be significantly different from what the description of a different company would be okay so you may apply for the same title perhaps in the same positions in in different companies and you can't always know for sure okay so there's that as well however there are a few things that we can do to ensure that we are as prepared as is humanly possible so that if something does not work, it doesn't work because we did not put in time and effort and energy, okay? And one of the things, which I will just jump right into, the number one thing that we will start with when you're prepared for an interview, let's say that you've just gotten the email that, hey, we received your CV, or, you know, uh, Arun and Tim forwarded your profile to us, and we're actually quite interested in you, or they forward the profile and be interested in X, Y, Z, okay? It's a beautiful thing to get the invited to interview email, okay, or phone call or whatever. But it will be a sad day if you show up for the interview and you're not prepared, okay, whether it's virtual or physical and you're not prepared. Now, let's jump straight into the absolute rules that you have to have in mind when you're preparing for an interview. We will, we will, uh, the rules are around four core points, okay. Number one is uh, you need to learn how to properly do research on a company. The second thing is you need to learn how to ask the right questions in an interview setting. Some people at the end of interview, you're, uh, you're asked, hey, uh, do you have any questions for us? And they're like, ah, no, it doesn't show well, okay? The third thing you need to learn is learn how to communicate that you're the right person for the job. I, I learn how to communicate fit. Okay, when you say communicate fit, we mean communicate that you are the person they have been praying for, you're the incredible human being who's going to make their dreams come true for that role. You have to communicate fit, okay? And three, you have to have some answers to some of the very most common interview questions, okay? And some of those questions on the face of it are simple questions like, tell us about you, okay? Some people start an interview like this. Um, my name is Cindy Adam. I am a mother of one and a husband to one. I live blah, 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 They don't give, they don't care, okay? What they're asking you is, tell us about you and why you, we are talking to you now, okay? They don't care that I'm, I'm not a mother of anyone, but for the record, they, they don't, don't really. A lot of times what they're asking for, and we are going to go down into those questions, some of the things you need to be prepared for when you're preparing for that interview, okay? And I know this is a non-technical assignment and uh, you have deliverables by Friday, but what I want you guys to have, the mindset I'd like for us all to have is the fact that this is something that could open me up to being able to stand out over and above anyone else, okay? Being able to do your homework is absolutely important. Great, great. Any questions so far? Questions? If we're good, raise your hand. If we're good so far. Milky, Toyin, Beza, Pumbani. Great, 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 great. Okay, wonderful. So uh, 
Here's the thing. We'll start with the uh, finding, um, doing research. I wanted to so, ask a question. Yeah, go on. How, how do you know, like, the best questions to ask? Like, I think that I, I always have that issue of getting the best. Like, people ask, like, do you have any questions? But, like, I don't have a question right now, but I might have a question later on. That happens to me all the time. I don't know how I can. So, Yin, we will get into it in a few minutes, okay? I promise that's the whole point where we're here, to show you the how, okay? Great? Great. So, uh... Uh, Semensh, absolutely, that's why we're here. That was just an overview of what we will talk about, okay? Now, let's go to step one. Step one is doing your research, okay? Uh, before I before I joined uh, Ten Academy, I used to run my own tech startup, and a lot of times I used to do some of the asking, interviewing in person, and a lot of times, a lot of times, the first questions we we used to ask is uh, from your research. What do you think we do? And you'd be surprised by the number of people who showed up to an interview and they didn't even know what your organization does. It's a waste of the interviewer's time. It's a waste of your time. Okay. In such a case, when something like that happens, uh, considering we used to do a lot of our homework. Okay. Whatever information we can find about the potential intern or employee and everything, we used to go and Google them figure out LinkedIn and everything, see what some of the things that they've wrote about, some of the things they're passionate about and things, you will get stalked. So if we do our homework and you don't, that's a that's a huge red flag. And when, in cases like that, we used to tell them, uh, those interviews used to last one or two minutes. We tell them, uh, sorry, but it sounds as if you're not prepared. So uh, I don't think we are a good fit. So many times it happened. So let's talk about how you make sure you're not caught in a situation like that because this is important number one google okay and why is google your friend it has almost everything you need about the information you're looking for okay so let's talk about some of the things that you can do when you're doing your research okay check the website and social media guys this is a very very low hanging fruit okay are there any interesting projects or wins they've done lately okay is there anywhere they've been mentioned have they been mentioned in a local magazine or in forbes has anyone in the company appeared on tv look for it you will find it okay if any of it is related to something you're interested in or the role that it has been advertised that you're interviewing for, write it down, okay? Write it down. Something that comes up for you, write it down, okay? Have they raised any financing recently, okay? Is there any new products that they've introduced to the market or announced, okay? Or are there, is there anywhere where they've been significantly mentioned in the press, whether good or bad, okay? Or something. Just write it down, okay? Now, look up some of the key employees that work there okay or in the department that you assume or presume you will be working with stock them on linkedin okay stock them on linkedin or on google or whatever some people are like right now are really active in places like twitter for example twitter or, or some of them have their own blogs and everything if you can find anything related to that find it read it do they have a github profile okay find it read it is there any project they've worked on? Find it, read it. it do, have, they, have they announced anywhere where the technical journey is written down? Okay. Do you have any questions about their work? Find it, read it, write it down. Okay. Now, the third that's very, 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 very important is acquainting yourself with the industry that company is operating in. Okay. So, for example, it's a company like the cancer thing you guys this week, okay? Let's work with that. That's in the healthcare space, okay? There are a lot of things that have gone awry this past year because of COVID. Do you have any interesting insights, you know? Are there any intersections between COVID and cancer or whatever, whatever? What can you find out there? Are there any finances, financial disruptions that have come up as a result of all financing going to COVID aside from cancer research? find out you know just be curious okay but acquainting yourself with the industry and seeing some of the trends in the industry that you could hang on to or you can get some important questions 
that is important okay then find out what are some of the challenges that you feel that industry is facing okay find out you know you can say challenges in agriculture in africa for example okay then uh, is, is that company a big player or a small player in the industry if they're a small player some of the questions that you can ask which we'll talk about next is uh have you been able to navigate with the you know the past year with limited logistics being able to travel directly to farmers how have you guys been able to navigate that for example okay so those are some of the questions but be acquainted with some of the trends in the industry some of the challenges the industry faces whatever here's what you have to be able to do by the end of this first part you need to know what the company's core business is what is their revenue model how do they make money okay revenue model is how to make money okay what industry do they operate in what challenges exist within that industry and what problem are they trying to solve and which challenges do you think they probably are facing as a company you need to be able to say that okay i can say company xyz does this is in this industry these are the challenges this industry has faced over the last year okay and uh, what I think this company is probably facing as a result of the industry changes or whatever, okay? And if I look closely, these are some of the trends that I can foresee, okay? We're done with part one. Questions? Jermaine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to ask, like, mm -hmm. there is a situation where you will, you will be applying for many... Mm -hmm. Like a lot of industries, like businesses, yeah. and there's a time where you you get a call, mm -hmm. then unwillingly they ask you to direct to at the interview. Mm -hmm. How you overcome that? Like mm -hmm. you've been like prepared for that, so they mm -hmm. surprise you with a, a phone call interview. Uh -huh. uh can you reply like you 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 not ready for the interview, so you can you can set it for mm -hmm. next day or hours, or you have to. Mm -hmm. Stand there and do the interview. Okay. Uh, I will answer that question, but could you please type it in the chat box so I can be sure I am understanding what you're asking, please. Okay? Because I feel like there are a number of things. Uh, salary expectations, we'll answer that. Okay? We'll answer that. And thank you for asking that. Blaze, what's your question? Um, my question is, you did mention researching on, let's say, the company and... For example, you find that it has a negative background, but probably it's currently facing some negative backlash mm. in the in the media or something. Mm. Is it also something you should probably look into, or how do you go about that? That's a very good point, okay? And we will answer it in the second part on how to answer the kind of questions you should ask, okay? Inda, go on. Uh, just to add on what Blaise has said, and uh, when they when they have a, when they ask you, do you have a question to ask us? Can you like uh, ask a question about that negative thing that has been happening? Mm. Okay, great and uh, great. Uh, Jokinda, you want to go again? No, 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 no. I was like putting it down, but I, I, yeah. okay, guys. So uh, looks like both all of you guys are raring to go to the next part, which is number two: drummers asking the right questions. Okay. So the mindset I want you guys to have when you're thinking about this is genuine interest and curiosity in the company, in the industry, in the role, okay? So step one, we've done our research work, okay? And we've written things down, okay? So make sure that the questions you write are not questions that you could have been able to answer with a simple Google uh, check. Make sure they're not questions that have already been answered in the job description. Those things are important, okay? So, if there are any pending questions that you have, you still have blanks in your mind, okay? You have to understand, first of all, that it, you can't know everything by just Googling. There's some things that are not Googleable, okay? And those are some of the things that you want to be able to ask, okay? So, be ready to ask relevant questions that would impact you, okay? First of all, if they've not, in the course of the interview or in the job description, they've not described what the pay grade is, you can ask it, we'll talk about the pay grade at some point, okay? But you can ask things like, what's your career trajectory, you know? 
you know, if, if I started this today, what does a typical day in this job look like? Things that will affect you. What, what are some of the important skills do you think that I would need to really succeed at this role? Okay. Or things to do with which department will I be heavily interacting with on a consistent basis? You want to have an idea of what a day to day life working there looks like. A lot of times, remember, they may have described the company culture on their websites. Company culture is becoming a thing now, okay? Or on the job description, a lot of times they also describe a day-to-day -day thing. So if there's a question that is still pending, even after that description, you write it down. This is important because they want to know that you're actually thinking about and want to succeed in that role, okay? It's good give you things like what's your text te technical stack okay what 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 code what language do you guys usually use mostly in your technical things you want to also in as far as they are interviewing you you also are internally interviewing them and yourself to see if they are a good fit for you okay so that's number one things that directly affect you okay then the other things you can do is uh ask things that are related to the company okay so for example you can ask things like so if you during your research pit if you is there anything that you're excited about regarding a project you've noticed they're working on okay or the organization cultures have described it okay maybe you saw there was a party somewhere okay you could ask questions regarding uh you know uh if you saw some companies have getaways a lot of times okay so if you notice there's a getaway somewhere, you're like, um, do you feel like that getaway has been helpful in merging employee things? Or could you tell me the mindset behind having getaway in a forest in the Amazon, for example? OK, those are some of the questions you can ask because you want to be able to see and to allow them to see you in that role. OK, so there's some of the other questions you can ask are I noticed you've recently entered the African market. How are you handling the scattered data when it comes to agriculture and farming in the continent? It shows that you're thinking about the industry and you're also thinking about the company and its place within the industry, okay? Or I noticed that you've got funded for this cancer project in 2018 by the Gates Foundation. Have you found it challenging spreading awareness regarding this cancer in the COVID-19 period? It shows you've done your homework. It shows you're thinking about the organization and you're thinking about the how everything around the COVID-19 has affected the organization, okay? Another thing is that some of the bigger companies have started publishing technical blogs on their work. I will share with you this document that has some of the links, okay, to some of them. Okay, so you can just check some of those technical blogs. Are there any questions that you have? Okay, don't ask a question for the sake of asking, but it has to come from a place of genuine interest and curiosity, okay? If they have any public reports or blog posts they've written that are that, that have interesting insights that you know is it is there anything that speaks to you about what they've written okay that you can build on for example like hey I, I saw you guys publish this blog on XYZ okay um it, it was a bit con controversial within the industry how do you feel like uh, people have responded to it you can ask something like that if it is interesting if it's interesting to you and it is relevant to the role that you're applying for okay so those are some of the things that you can ask so read the job description for the role you applied for you must have at least two questions around the role some great questions you can ask could be what does a typical day look like i've told you that what special skills would i need to have to succeed in this position you could ask that or what are the types of teams and projects will I be working with in this role or what would an exceptional performer in this role be able to contribute okay just be careful not to ask a question that has already been listed in the JD or in the course of the interview itself now I've given you guys the background on asking questions does anyone have any questions about how to ask questions in an interview Anyone? Jakinda and Blaze, there's a question you asked before we went into this role. Do you guys, do you feel it's been answered? As for me, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Okay. So, okay, just a simple, like, let's say, for example, yeah. uh, you you actually are playing to an organization and probably it's, it's a very controversial research they're currently doing that's receiving, let's say, backlash from the community. Mm -hmm. Is it something you probably want to 
-hmm. learn more about, ask yeah. about, clarify. Great, great. And I can see everyone is here. But this is how I would, uh, this is how I would approach it myself, okay? If it is a situation whereby it's the elephant in the room and you feel like it's taken a huge impact on the company, one of the questions I would ask in such a situation is like, I have, I have read them, I have read the blogs and I noticed that there's this huge thing, there's this big challenge that you guys have. How have you been able to navigate it and how do you feel like it's going to affect this role or or the performance of this department and whatnot? Those are some of the questions that you can ask. But you ask that if you know that whatever rumors there are about the company, first of all, you're okay with those challenges, okay? There are have been some organizations like Monsanto, for example, that have had a huge hit in PR because the agricultural products have allegedly caused cancer. Some people would not want to work with Monsanto because of things like that, okay? So if it is not something that is egregious or against your own uh, beliefs, so to speak, uh, you could ask, okay, first of all, we assume you still want to interview for this because you want to work for this organization, but you could ask questions. It's some questions, there are some safe questions that you could come up with that show a care and a concern about the health of the organization despite the other challenges that come up okay so uh if it is something minor that's just probably a rumor that's in some dingy looking blog you know then maybe it's not worth bringing up but if it is something that has come up in a big publication it's a huge deal okay and they're still hiring it, it's safe to find a safe question to ask that, that comes from a point of curiosity and concern that is still very polite uh, i don't know if arun has any things to add about that or no you're muted so blaze i think you have to be realistic i mean if you ask assuming that they that they're looking to hire i think it's okay to ask if you're ready to walk away um but you should be satisfied with the work that you do but in asking that sort of question you may also nobody wants to hire someone that doesn't want to be there so i think it's fair to ask um you probably should ask but i would be careful in the way as cindy said the way that you ask it and also be realistic about what it might mean it's a very roundabout way to say there's there's no one clear answer. Mm -hmm. I also think you have to be realistic and say, I mean, take any big company, Facebook, Google, MTN, whoever it is, there's always some controversy somewhere. You're not oh, you're not necessarily being asked to be the CEO to run this company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Blaze that and Jakinda, because you guys had asked the same question ish. Do you feel like that's uh, that has cleared a few things up? And for me, I think it has. Okay, Guys. great. It's okay. okay, great. Uh, good. So, uh, any questions? Rachel, go on. Okay, okay, Cindy, I would like to know how you have to answer like the question you, it's your first time to hear it, or it's a, and a tool, it's your first mm -hmm. to hear that. Uh, and are you going to be honest with them that you don't know about it? Mm. Oh, okay. So a lot of times, okay, and this goes back to the point on responding to questions, and we will address that in the next point on how do you communicate fit, okay? So just hang on to that question because we're going to come into it. Is there anyone who has a question? Rosalind, go on. It's just not a question. I just want to give her a tip of you know, what I did uh, an interview with the devil FP. Mm -hmm. uh, the head of IT department asked me uh, a question and at that time I didn't know why he was asking also I have no answer and I just asked him again to just explain the question mm -hmm. and he was just thinking I was just trying to understand from his words mm -hmm. and then at that time I understand uh, something and also answered mm -hmm. 10 so mm -hmm. just try to understand from his words from the questions if you don't understand what he was saying, just try to ask again and understand something. Just a dip from his words or her words, actually. 
Okay, so uh, Rosalind, if I get you correctly, you, you're saying that find something uh, that you can relate to it from the question that you can you can respond to. Is that what you're saying, uh, Rosalind? I want to make sure I understand you correctly. Okay, uh, for example, uh, him, someone may ask what are data centers yes. or how can we just, uh, what, or just, he, might, he or she might ask uh, uh, how to just protect data or something. So mm -hmm. just try to understand from the question. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand the question, try to ask uh, a question again mm -hmm. to verify the question. So understand from mm -hmm. the question. Oh. Just sorry. As you can get a tip if you, if you just ask a question again and again. Okay. Just trying to clarify the question. Okay, thank you for uh, that contribution, Jerusalem. And one of the things that we can take from what you've said is that one, if you don't understand what they are asking, okay, ask them if they can clarify. If it is something that you are not conversant with, it's okay to say it's the first time I'm hearing of that, but it's something I can definitely go and do a lot more research on and. Uh, maybe get back to you in an email afterwards. It's okay to be honest, okay? One of the things that I find very hilarious sometimes is when you ask someone a question and they, and you can tell that they're fumbling around because they can't just tell you that I, I don't know. And then they guess something that is so off left field and you're left wondering what? Okay, so being able to say that we can appreciate someone say, uh, generally, it's the first time I'm actually hearing about that, but that's something I'm going to find out on, okay? And uh, if there's any question they have regarding how you're able to manage that thing that you're not very conversant with, well, you can say, how about I can respond to you uh, on that on email once I do more research on it. It's absolutely respectable to do that, okay? Nobody knows everything, 100% anything. That's what Arun has emphasized on in the chat box. So thank you for that, Arun, as well. And thank you, Rachel and Jerusalem. Anyone has any questions regarding asking a question in an interview setting? Anyone? Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next point is some of the most important points. How do you communicate fit for a role? OK, whether it's an entry level role or something a bit more advanced, OK? How do you communicate fit? So you have, first of all, you're working under the assumption you've done your homework. You know what, what uh, industry the organization plays in. You know what challenges the industry has. You hopefully also know what some of the biggest, strongest contenders are, are competitors in that industry is, okay? You know what products they've been working on, any announcements that they've had in the press or in the news. You've done your homework, okay? You have, you, you have questions that you've prepared for things that you do not understand. You understand, at least you have an, an idea of what the role is going to look like. So now it's a time to show them that you are the person that they would be blessed to have within the organization. Okay, how do you communicate fit? Okay, so there's a technique that a lot of, uh, the help that works well a lot of times, okay? So uh, one of this is, especially for this specific part, what you will need is listening skills. And a lot of times in an interview setting, they are going to tell you, uh, you'll get ideas regarding what, what is important to them as a company or as a mission or what is the most important current um, agenda. Okay, you can be able to tell. You can be able to tell that this is what this company is trying to achieve and this is what they're trying to achieve with it for. Okay, if you're a really good listener, you can be able to glean, okay, things that you may not even find on the website or anything, okay, but they are important for you to know. And you can only know this once, you can only know this when you listen once, okay? So, a lot of times in an interview setting, you can be asked, uh, Tell us about a time when you managed to solve X, Y, Z, okay, or and things like that. Or tell us about a situation where this happened, and uh, tell us about a situation where this happened, and this is how and how you solved it, perhaps. Or have you ever been in this and this and this and this situation? A lot of times, okay. So one of the things that you can do is use the STAR technique. What is the STAR technique? The STAR technique is 
explain the situation, okay, that you went through, okay, the situation that is related to what they've asked, okay, then put in what the task that you are supposed to do. This is what, for example, our situation could be uh, our servers went down at midnight, okay, for instance, our servers went down at midnight, people are trying to access our platform, but we are off there on social media, tagging us all over the place, uh, literally character assassinating us. We didn't have anyone on call at that time and everything else. The main task that we had to do is to get online as possible and redeem our, redeem our what, for example, redeem our PR for instance, okay? That was the task. You've explained the situation, the next is the task, what you need to be doing, okay? So the next thing you'll say is the A, the action you took, okay? So you've explained the situation and the task ahead. So what action did you take? So I happened, you can say that my boss called me or I happened to be online at that time and I saw us trending on Twitter and I, because I had the, I had the access to to the links to the code blah blah i woke up got into action uh linked up with one of my other colleagues who was thankfully also awake and uh, we came up with a plan and within an hour or two we were back up and uh for every person who had been inconvenienced we gave them xyz to make them a little less angry at us so being able to communicate a situation that happened the action that you were supposed to take uh you know the task that was ahead the task that was ahead, the action that you took and the result, that is what they're looking for. Essentially, when they're asking that question, they're trying to see how much of a problem solver are you? And are you the kind of person that we can rely on to take this to take this role seriously, to, to do X, Y, Z? So a lot of times, remember the, ta remember the technique, the start technique, the situation, the action, uh, situation, the task, the action, and the result okay now i have personally found myself in a situation where they ask you oh explain to us a situation where blah 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 blah, and it turned out that i didn't have a situation like that you know i i'm not proud to say that once or twice you know in my younger in my significantly younger years i may have lied you know and uh, came up with a scenario that was so left field that I do not think they actually believed me. Okay, so there was that. Uh, but in a situation like that, you can give an example of something that could be related. Okay, like, you know, I have not faced a situation like that, but there's a time where XYZ happened and this was a similar issue crisis, maybe. And this is what needed to be done or X, Y, Z. I think any situation that you're able to find a way where you took initiative and solved a problem and averted a crisis, that's exactly the situation that you can be able to, to say, okay? So uh, are there any questions so far? Any questions regarding that? I, I just wanna say though, that <clears throat> so it's important, we don't make stuff up. I think you have to find a way to recast something that actually happened. Mm -hmm. Please don't make stuff up. Absolutely. Do not make stuff up because uh, a lot of times, one, it diminishes your credibility as a professional. Absolutely. And secondly, they're more likely to find out. OK, uh, when I was in my very early, early career stages, when I didn't have examples to give, I think I think that's probably why I, didn't, I failed a lot of interviews. OK, um, good. Fumbani, you go first, then Blaze will go next. All right, you were explaining the during the start, situation, mm -hmm. task, and action. I didn't get the last part because uh, I lost my. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, the R is the result. Okay, the result that is hopefully positive about the action that you took. Okay, so there's a situation at hand. Okay, uh, yeah. there's a task that was ahead of you. Okay, a lot of it sometimes it doesn't even have to be a crisis. Okay, there's an action that was in front of you. Okay, uh, there's a task that was in front of you. This is the action you took, and this is the result that resulted from your action. Okay, you just have to show that you were able to take a situation that was likely unpleasant or uncomfortable and took a series of actions that made it less unpleasant or. Or uncomfortable. Okay. 
Great. Thank you, Fumbani. Please, you're up. Okay, in that same situation we were talking about, they tell you, tell me about a time. I think there's a thin line between sounding natural and yeah. sounding as if you like practice it or just trying to mm -hmm. make stuff up. So do you have like any advice so that doesn't sound as if mm -hmm. it's something you've cooked or it's something you really looked into, you know, it comes out very negatively to the mm -hmm. recruiter. Okay, so one of the things that you can do, because you can't always know 100% the questions they will ask you beforehand. So it's an advantage if you're the kind of person who can think on their feet and think really fast, okay? But it's okay to take a bit of a pause, okay? For Even if it's just for like, hmm, it's a really good question, yeah? There's this time, okay? It is it. The more detail that you're able to provide in a way that shows you really were there, the more possibility, you know, your honesty can come across, okay? So a lot of times when you're explaining that star scenario, they could ask follow-up questions, okay? Regarding that, like, oh, that sounds very interesting, you know? Uh, could you tell us how this and this and this happened? So for example, if you, if uh, the organization that you want, maybe you are head of a project and uh, maybe this is a leadership thing, you're head of a project and uh, they needed to, uh, and they needed to ensure that, you know, the, your department was at, at risk or, or the role that was at risk and you had to save the role or your colleagues or something, you know, and uh, you can just, you know, ideally what you want to do is to ensure that you are able to give detail when you're asked for detail. You have to ensure they're able to give detail when you ask for detail. If you can't give detail and the details you're giving are not making sense, then it's very likely they will think that rightfully, okay, or wrongfully, that you're, you're cooking up, you're being selective with the truth. Does that answer your question, please? So take, being able to just take a pause, okay? and being able to give as many relevant details within a specific time period as possible, I think that helps. And being able to know that you can answer follow-up questions regarding that situation as much as is possible also helps, okay? I just wanted I to add something. So, so sorry, Elias, before you go, keep in mind we're preparing you for a very limited set of roles. So a lot of the unknowns are falling away. You're being prepared for either a machine learning engineer role or a data engineering role, or some people for ML ops. Um, there's not a whole lot of questions. It's not a it's not a beauty contest. People want to hire you for what you can deliver in terms of technology. And part of what we've tried to do is to give you experience in teams as part of stand-ups, working with real technology, delivering um, real value and real results. You have all the assets there. Um, so your need to make stuff up is probably reduced. A. B, um, there's no harm in practicing. I would rather interview somebody who's really, for example, I really like it if somebody shows up and they're in a quiet place and they've worn reasonable clothes and they have a quiet background, as opposed to somebody who, I've had interviews where in the last three months where somebody was standing on the side of the road in traffic with his or her phone. Um, so it's, there's no, be prepared for the job that you want to take up. If you want an ML engineering job, you know what the typical ML engineering jobs look like. If you don't know, then ask, because there's not a huge amount of diversity in those. If you want a data engineering job, ask. There's not a huge amount of diversity. Prepare for what those roles will be asking for and be ready to answer those sorts of questions. And the mapping must be from what industry is looking for to what you can actually do. And I can, you are prepared for each of those roles especially on the ML engineering side, data engineering side, we may have a little bit more work to do, but absolutely, you guys are prepared. And Germain, that's right, you need to make that decision. There's no right or wrong decision, but you need to make a decision. So for everyone who's worried about being getting questions from left field, let's start with what's not a question. How do you, when you get to that interview, your question should focus on what sort of ML engineering do they do? What does their tech stack look like? 
what sort of problems have they faced, where do they get their data. You can be ready with technical questions as well. The majority of you are, well, you're going for entry-level roles. Nobody's interviewing with the CEO. You guys will be interviewing with technical people. So be ready with those sorts of questions. Don't try and solve a huge space. Solve your ML engineering entry-level space or your data engineering entry-level space. Okay, great. Uh, Milky, you've asked a question. You once asked the question that, oh, Elias, you'll go next, yeah? Uh, that still bugs you. How would you deal with a colleague that didn't agree with what you worked and how would you solve that problem? Any ideas? Uh, I've been asked this question too. And uh, I mean, I did get the job at the time and I'm trying to figure out if, I don't know if it was because of the answer or anything, but one of the key things that comes to me ideally is uh, uh, fast things fast. One, emphasize on things that handle things like teamwork, okay? And uh, being able to ask yourself, are, is this how, if we were to look at the data or the information we have, which is the best cost to take, not who is the one who gave the idea, okay? So being able to emphasize things like that is important. And being able to also emphasize things to do with team success and all that and all that uh that relates to that but also being able to come across as the kind of person who can agree to disagree and support other people's ideas even though you disagree with them even if it shows it's the best interest of the team okay you can say things like what do other people in the team think okay or is there a possibility for us to test micro test both ideas and see which one works or what does the t data tell us or from the information we have you know um what's the best course of action for example and the other thing you can ask is who is responsible for the outcome sometimes because it doesn't mean that people who are junior to you don't have a voice but sometimes if there's no clear way forward the person who's responsible for the outcome can say something like how about we do it like this i'm convinced because of the data xyz this is the right cause of action i will take responsibility if this does not work out okay being able to show that you can collaborate and emphasize the importance of uh, the importance of things like that so uh yeah i don't know if anyone has anything they can add on that question So it's normal, right? And I think what, again, what people want to see the thought process. So there is no, none of you who will never have a colleague that you don't get along with in your career. So just talk through the process. I think the point of uh, emphasizing the work or the result is important. And what steps have you taken? Even better is to give a concrete example. So you can talk about some of your group projects at school, your group projects here. Um, what was the situation? How did you deal with it? Uh, what worked well? What didn't work well? And what would your approach be for the future? Uh, my advice to everyone would be to make emphasize the fact that it's not always, even if you don't get along with people or you found somebody difficult to deal with, you emphasize how you're able to move the project ahead. So there's a great line which says, disagree, but then commit to the solution. So you don't need to discuss things endlessly, and you don't want to be the person who gets so married to his or her ideas that they can never let it go. Disagree, discuss, um, agree on a way ahead and then commit to whatever solution you decide to implement would mm -hmm. be my advice. Okay, Milky, does that cover what you, does that cover your question? Ah, wonderful, great. I will go with Elias, then Behigo, you go next. Elias? Okay, thanks. Uh, on the summary about the company, like mm -hmm. it says about leaders on the market and the competitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like when you talk about competitors, like it might come up negatively based on the position of the company in the market mm. so in what context are we going to talk about the competitors or should we not discuss that point okay so this is how this is these are some of the ways i would think about approaching the conversation about competitors if it comes naturally as part of the conversation then that is wonderful okay uh if you've noticed something interesting that you think is worth mentioning okay and it comes naturally you can mention that as well okay you're the kind of person who is 
absolutely curious in general. Sorry about that. If you're the kind of person who's absolutely curious in general, what you can do is uh, when, uh, when it comes to a conversation about a competitor, you could ask, if you ask the question regarding them, then you can respond with whatever honest answer you have. You can say, these are the advantages I think they have over this organization, but these are some of the ideas that I think they can be countered if you, if you do have those ideas, okay? But let's talk about bringing it up yourself. If it is relevant to the conversation, how I will approach that is, uh, I've seen XYZ has done this, okay? Uh, they seem like, you know, this is the effects they're having on the market or, or on the industry. Do you, do you feel like, you know, it, there's a, what are some of the ways you feel like this can still stand against that, for example? It's not very ad advisable, in my opinion, to do it in that way unless they bring it up because it can come across as, uh, I don't know, in my opinion, it could come across as being, uh, I don't know whether aggressive is the right word, but uh, it could come across as being a bit, oof, you know. Um, yeah, but I'm really curious on hearing how Arun would address that. But if it was me, that's how I would address it. But it's a very thin ice, in my opinion, depending on height raised. Mm -hmm. So the whole, the whole point, I think, is to be informed about the sector. So let's take the example of TikTok versus Facebook. So TikTok has taken the lead in becoming video sharing platform. Um, it doesn't mean that TikTok is a bigger company than Facebook or a better company than Facebook or they have better technology than Facebook, but they are competitors in this one sector. So any company that you interview with will have other competitors. And it's not only about the overall size of the company, but you could argue one way or the other that which one is a better company, what has a better future, is it TikTok or Facebook, or is it Tesla or Volkswagen that is now coming out with electric cars? There's so many different ways to cut it, but being aware of who else is playing in which sector and being um, thoughtful about knowing, for example, if you're interviewing at Facebook and you said, look, I see that TikTok has really done well in implementing technology ABC, um, and asking a question around that, it's not about saying, you know, TikTok is killing you guys, what are you doing? But it's asking a thoughtful question, which is reflected and saying, okay, they've somehow taken the lead in their algorithm is ahead. I see that you have responded with this. Um, what is your approach or asking a question around the technology or around the language or the implementation? But the point is that you need to, preparation also understands, also means understanding what are some of the um questions that that group may be asking themselves because what they what people want to see is that when you join the team from day one that you are also making the company's priorities your priorities and if you don't know what the other people in the industry are doing it's very hard to um to ask that so this is a opportunity to demonstrate that um, you've thought about the industry and by doing that preparation, you're equipped with some of those answers is how I would look at it. So there's no question of, you know, putting people down or it, it shouldn't be a, maybe it's a question of practice. There's no, you would never, you should never say, hey, you know, you guys are losing. What are you guys going to do? But inform yourself. You can unmute. We can discuss it, Elias. Yeah, thanks, uh, from that perspective, I think uh, it would be easier. And, and I think okay. it's really good It's really good to know about those different sectors. So you guys, there's only a limited number, number of sectors that you might be working in. So it could be ad tech, could be um, fintech. So using the example of fintech, um, I, I don't know how many banks there are in your country, or I don't think there are that many mobile operators. But if, if I was going to, for an interview at a bank in Ethiopia, I would not want to go to that interview without having a sense of, let's say you're working for a credit scoring product, you should probably go in with an idea of which banks are doing better and how, what, what sort of systems do they use. Um, and so at least you can ask a meaningful question. So be aware of the sectors that your company is working in. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, any questions regarding the question answer thing before Yati steps in and takes us through the common interviews questions bit? 
I was uh, uh, waiting my turn, so let me just dive in. Okay, go on. There you go. Go on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not sure if it's asked uh, earlier. I joined a bit uh, late, mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask uh, what if if they ask us about our experience. I mean, we have some experience, and our Git GitHub also can reveal that. But what if they ask us uh, whether we did some kind of real projects in a in a in a real company or organization, mm -hmm. and not okay. only the trainings? Uh, it's Okay, so first of all, a lot of the trainings that are there at Ten Academy are focused towards industry and what industry needs. And I think that is why your profile is important because then you get to have a portfolio and that portfolio will have uh, a lot of the things that are reflective of what an actual real company would do. Okay, so let's say if they're insisting on the question, but have you worked with a real company, so to speak, you know, you can say, you, you can be honest and say no. However, these are some of the projects that I have been able to work on and uh, some of the I was able to create X, Y, Z out of this situation. You can describe some of the relatable project work that you've done at 10 Academy or you've done in your own free time to relate how you are a great fit for that position. OK, uh, a lot of times, yes, some organization may want or may emphasize on the importance of having actually worked in a structured corporate or startup or organization in some way, but there's some who don't really care. They just want you to demonstrate all the ways in which you can do the things the role will require of you to do. Okay, so being able to specify and 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 explain how whatever it is they're asking, you know, you to do is something you're conversant with and you can take care of. I really feel like that's something you can be able to do from your even if it's from your 10 academy assignments because we don't call you student for a reason you know you're trainees yeah and uh, what you do here is important and is worth showcasing for instance and that's why we keep on encouraging you that even if there's a uh, that even if you know a deadline has passed you know and you're supposed to submit on sunday not on sunday you know on saturday and you're able to update your code not on Sunday because we want you to rest on Sunday uh, at some point, you could do that because it's supposed to be a living thing that you can use to showcase all the expertise that you've been able to gather over time. Does that answer your question, Behigu? Yes, absolutely, it does. Great. Uh, you muted, Arun? Sorry, I saying I would encourage you to think about how you can frame some of the work that we did. So first, yes, you have to be honest. Um, but second, who cares? Um, if you don't have re if you don't have real world work experience, um, what is it that people are looking for? They want experience of delivering things, high quality standing, understanding business needs and delivering on time. So I think that you can you should practice. How do you frame some of the work that you've done with here um, in how it could be related and it's not you're not working but how it's similar to what you would face in the world of work so the uh, pivot bio driven challenge the lidar challenge is a real challenge that they're actually facing the challenge you're doing this week is something that kunumi in brazil is actually working on so these are challenges which are similar to industry done in a time limited format and done with the team so i would encourage you to practice answering that question if you have 0, 0.0 work experience then you can say no, but this was, I was part of this program and this is how um, some of the things that I would have gotten in the world of work were actually similar. Um, practice those answers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop off, but I wanna make one more point just before I, I stop. Anyone who goes into an interview cold um, is doing themselves a disservice. People, you should practice your answers. There is no good interviewee or a good presenter I know who doesn't practice, especially at the start. So if you think that you are um, at the level where you don't need to practice, then I think you are doing yourself a disservice. You should be practicing. Yeah? OK. Thanks. OK, uh, thank you for that, Arun. Uh, yeah, Tiana, the floor is yours. Are you able to take it away, Yeti?
Um, Cindy, I think there is a question in the chat box for um, Smengsh. So after that, I'll join in for the common interview questions. Okay. Uh, which uh, it's which in the chat box. I am trying to look at the question because anything is here from yeah. is a comment. Oh, what if they ask you how you can convince your team about your work? Okay. One of the ways you can answer that specific question is that being able to emphasize how important defined teamwork is, is a really important skill to have. Okay, you can say that uh, one of the ways that I've been able to convince my team is uh, for, you know, one, having the data with me. If I want, if I'm proposing a specific course of action, I usually go with data, I usually lead with data, I usually lead with facts and figures, you know. But more than that, I reach out to them to ask, I usually reach out to them to ask what their opinions are see how whatever course of action actually affects them and is there are there alternative options that we've perhaps not considered you know these are some of the ways that you can be able to communicate that you are into teamwork but you're also a professional who is not just with the emotions but you also lead with your mind as well um i don't know if that answers your question she mentioned or if i've answered an absolutely wrong question what do you think Sinesh? Samanj, are you there? Okay, so so does that answer your question? Yeah, I think she has typed in the chat box. Great, wonderful. Yeah, yeah to the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much, Cindy. Um, hello, everyone. Um, just a disclaimer: you're going to hear my rooster. Just forget about him. Okay, he's very. He needs attention. Let's just not give him any attention. Anyway, now, so the last section that I am going to deal with is common interview questions, okay? And um, this is something that I believe that some people overlook, and then you have the other set of people. They don't even know that you have this common interview questions, and then you have others who just overthink it, and they just stress about it. Okay, so now, um, off the top of our heads, can anyone just tell me any interview question that you think usually you're asked at an interview? Any question you think? Most likely, that is one question they're going to ask you. Yes, Behigo? After that, we'll go, Jackie. Yeah, yeah one comment is, what's your weakness and strengths? Okay, yes, that's a good one. Your weakness and your strength. Um, uh, Jakinda, uh, tell us about yourself. Definitely, tell us about yourself. And Milky, um, where do you see yourself after five years? I'm Jerusalem. Uh, ah, salary what expectation. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. What motivates you to work with us? The exactly. motivation. What motivates you to work with us? Yes, Jermaine? What makes you the perfect candidate for this position? Exactly. What makes you a perfect fit for this position? Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, Jermaine, you want to go again? Or no. that would be a mistake? No, no. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Saba, will you leave this job if you get another job? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so the first one that I am going to start with is this. It's the no-brainer, okay, that definitely, they're definitely going to ask you this question, either as direct, this way, or indirect. So they're going to ask you to tell them a little bit about yourself, okay? Now, why do we think it is necessary for an interviewer to ask me as an interviewee to tell um them about myself because i've sent in my profile i've sent my resume i've sent in cover letter i've done a video why would they need to ask me this question anyone who has an idea why this is usually a question they're going to ask regardless of the cover letter you've sent the profile that you've sent the video anything that you sent to introduce yourself definitely this is a question you might get asked why do you think that's necessary or why do you think interviewers ask that question? Can Anyone? Yes, Behigo. 
Yeah, two things pop up uh, for me right now. One is they might want to cross check. You know what you read, what you wrote might be uh, not completely right. You know there might be some additional information that you don't acquire that you wrote on your profile or resume. And the other is uh, they want to know uh, parts of you that you didn't write in the portfolio. For instance, uh, I might say I am a problem solver, but they might ask me, tell me a time you were a problem solver and what did you do and how do you do it? Then if I actually am not a problem solver and there is no time that I did that, then I will be out of speech and they kind of put, uh, you know, the gap in me and they didn't, they can't get that on the paper or the profile. So I guess that way they can filter their best candidate. Okay, thank you so much, Behigu. And I'm just looking at the um, comments in the chat box. Um, it gives them one final chance to further highlight uh, my relevant qualities and experience. Good. They might want to know your communication skills. Yes, Rachel. Um, yes. So it's a combination of all those things, but um, really at the heart of it, you are not a robot, okay? You are a human being, so they want to communicate with you because you've typed out you've made a video you've done everything but then they want to have a chat with you usually um this is a question you get at the start of the interview okay um it's two parts one part is just to you know get you um a little bit relaxed you know because sometimes when you're in um, an interview panel and this is um, a job or a position or an opportunity that you really want your tensed. So sometimes, yeah, ice breaking, okay? Because people are, some people are very comfortable talking about themselves. So this could be a very easy way to break the ice. So how should you answer this question, okay? Because now they want to know if your answer is going to be direct, if you go straight to the point, okay? If you by yourself can highlight your strong position or your strength but they should be in line with what the company's vision is what the company's mission is if you can do that then definitely you have started on the good path so now the first thing you're supposed to do starts with the with the motivation okay now the why okay um always always um try to be um relaxed so if you have a good story okay i'm not saying two days before the interview or whatever go and then you try to just cram as many um weird jokes online as possible you know that you can go on and just go and tell people and think everything is going to be okay but if you have um, a funny story about why you started this cause why you started this path in life um how you saw the um the job application, you know, just something to break the ice and then let the interviewer know your motivation, why, okay? So you could start with that. After that, the next thing you're supposed to do, definitely your strongest point, your educational background, okay? I mean, yes, they would want to know if you're married, um, they would want to know if you have kids and stuff, but then at the end of the day, they really want to know about you, Personally, let's say I'm in the interview panel. They want to know about Yati. My family, if I'm married, it's an extension, okay? Not saying it's not important, but really, they want to know first of all about me. So if I have um, a good story, you know, any way to break the ice that is related, okay, to whatever job interview or whatever interview panel that is, then definitely I'm going to start with that. Then, next thing, I'm going to start with my educational background, okay? And I would advise you do it in reverse chronological order. Now, um, what does that mean? Definitely don't start off with, I went to um, ABC primary school and I did my secondary school at WXYZ. Start off with the most recent educational achievement that you have. Because in all honesty, oh, I need to move. Because in all honesty, 
that would be the one that most aligns with the job opportunity that you're looking for that would be the one that aligns okay not saying that your primary school and winning the dancing competition when you are in class five is not important i mean like come on that's that's something you could start off with as a fun story okay but i'm um, definitely start off with the most recent educational achievement that you've gotten so let's say it's your university degree that you think is the most recent one okay you start off with it okay and then after that you've given um about your educational background okay it should also be in line with whatever your future work is going to be just like i've said now after your educational background the next thing you want to talk about okay work experience if you have any now um this can be a little bit intimidating especially if you're fresh off college and you look at your your cv and you're like i have never worked a day in my life um i don't know what i'm going to say but think was there um a little um job that you did for someone probably you know um you helped someone develop a website, software designing, you know, something little. It doesn't have to be um, a formal, formal job where you signed a contract. Any experience, experience so far that you've gotten, um, Jacinda, hold on. Any experience so far that you've gotten, definitely you should include it as long as it aligns, okay, with whatever the job requirement is that you're being interviewed for. Jacinda, please go ahead. No, I, I think you've answered my question because uh, personally, I, I don't have uh, more experience with uh, the data engineering part, but I have worked for people on uh, in other uh, industries and other areas that are not data related. Okay. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, um, if you have any work experience, okay. And it relates to the position, definitely start off with it. Okay. Now, um, if you worked, um, at a restaurant and you were the one preparing the chicken, um, Please don't include that, okay? Except you want to just lighten the mood, okay? But if you're being serious, try to find things, okay, that align with the work experience. But the one good thing that you guys have that others do not have is this, 10 Academy, okay? So if you don't have any work experience, by all means, skip. But look at what you've done. And think about what you're going to do up to week 12. Just imagine all what you're going to do. So definitely, after talking about your educational background, you can talk about all the projects that you've done. Well, ideally, you will not have time to talk about all the projects, but then the ones that, first of all, you really liked and the ones that you believe align with whatever um, job you might possibly work with the company. Okay, so you talk about those, you talk about how you were able to do the project. You just give a quick overview. You don't need to spend five minutes explaining about the process, okay? You just need to give an overview. And that is why always when, well, not always, most times when you have um, an assignment, okay, at the end, you're asked to write a report, okay? So basically, that report should help you have a general understanding of what you did about the processes and everything. So forget about the work experience if you don't have any that actually aligns with um, the field you're in. But then you guys have 10 Academy and 10 Academy really, really has stepped up the game for you. Okay, so give a quick overview of the projects that you've done. Not every single project, okay, because that would be um, a very long a very long explanation not every single project just the ones that you believe um that you really like that you believe um align with whatever job that you're currently being interviewed for and please try to showcase the skills that you have picked up because telling the interviewer about yourself you're trying to sell yourself you're marketing yourself you're saying hey look at me i am the best person I am the best fit. I went to so-and-so school. I graduated with honors. I graduated with a distinction, you know. 
though I don't have any work um, experience, I was a part of the three months ten academy training. I worked on speech, speech recognition. I worked on cleaning this data. I did this graph. You know, I plotted this A, B, C, D, you know. Through that, I was able to learn MLOps. I learned how to deploy my whatever, you know, just showcase all the skills that you've gotten for the projects that you can talk that you've talked about okay and then if you have a career direction meaning you've thought about what you want to do you know how you want to take your life further in terms of your career okay you showcase that you have an idea of the type of position that you want to take up now this shows that you are an assertive person and you have really thought out very well what you want to do okay and this in a way gives some understanding of where you might see yourself in three years five years okay so um before i move on to the next common interview question do you have any thoughts anything about this interview question tell me about yourself you can just raise your hand or type in the chat box. Anyone? <laughs> okay, so we have a very quiet group. Okay, I'm I'm just going to do something. Um, if I select someone now to just briefly in two minutes tell me about him or herself, are you guys up to that? Can we do an actual practice? Okay, uh, uh, Milky, Milky, yeah, yeah, <laughs> hi. Um, sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, but Definitely. I just had to select someone. So let's, um, let's just simulate, okay, um, an interview panel. So I am the one interviewing you, okay. So, hi, Milky, how are you? Uh, hi, Ati, uh, how are you? <laughs> okay, I'm fine, thank you. So, thank you for joining us on this interview today. So, um, Milky, kindly let us know a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, um, uh, my name is Milky. I am uh, a uh, recent graduate from uh, Addis Ababa University. I graduated in software engineering, and uh, I'm currently a trainee at Ten Academy in uh, uh, pursuing a career as a uh, training person, learning about data science and uh, that uh, uh, machine learning. Uh, some of my experience are uh, working on uh, uh, Amharic take uh, speech to take translation, uh, A-B testing, um, and uh, and more. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, I put you on the spot and you did well, okay? Now, thank you so much. Um, one thing that I liked is that he talked about um, his educational background. He did not um say i'm sorry i don't have any work experience he just totally skipped that portion and went on to 10 academy training that is his strong suit okay so if you don't if you feel you don't have any um work related um experience don't say um well i'm sorry i don't have any work experience but then i've been um a, a trainee at the 10 academy that's not a strong way to um express yourself so you could just talk about your educational background and then you talk about the project but what i would advise um be very specific about the project so you could say um hi my name is um yati and um i went to abcd university i graduated in 2021 um with a first class in um computer science engineering Um. 
I can't hear a word if anyone is speaking in here. It's now your back. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. My network, it, it keeps dropping. Can you guys hear me? Yes, now you're good. Okay, sorry. Anyway, so the point I was making is this. Uh, just basically talk about um, a specific project, most notably this project. And through this project, I was able to learn um, MLOps. I was able to practice A-B testing. I was able to train a model to do this. I was able to plot a... I'm sorry. I I know I'm going to no. It's 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 me. It's me. Trust me. It's not you guys. It's me. It's my it's my internet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's my internet. I I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, as I was saying, the second most common question you might get asked at an interview is this: Describe your journey to either you know machine learning or data engineering or whatever path that you would have chosen, okay? Now, this is because they want to understand, okay, how you came about this career path, but not only that, okay? They want to understand, okay, what happened during your journey towards getting to a point when you're like, okay, I think I know a little bit about machine learning enough for me to apply for a job and then this is something that i can do so um can we have just one person volunteer to answer that question describe your journey to machine learning data engineering or whatever path that you are going to take okay anyone i mean we don't expect it to be perfect that's why we're here it's just to try to make it better okay any person to help with that? We have a very quiet room now. So imagine you're actually at an interview and you ask this question. Are you just going to stare them down? You're like, I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to look right in your eyes and not say anything. No one? Okay. Um, well, so what do you have to do? Okay. Basically, you build the case for why you have the skills. Um, anyone can argue that any human being can just learn how to train a model, you know, and then they are qualified. Okay. Anyone can argue that. And I mean, it's not your job to say, oh, no, you're wrong. It's your job during that interview okay to let whoever is interviewing understand 
your journey. So you build a case for why you have that skill, starting with your undergrad. So probably you did a course, probably in your second year or your third year, or an introductory course into data engineering, data science, machine learning, and that sparked your interest, okay? So that is where you're going to start with your journey because it was there you got the foundational knowledge or probably you went to a talk or probably you saw a video or you read a book or, you know, just something, anything that um, sparked your interest into this journey. You talk about it. Secondly, another good thing, okay, is self-learning. What did you do by yourself? Okay, that further enhanced your knowledge about this field, about machine learning, or is it data engineering? What did you do? Did you um, read a book? Did you read resources? Did you watch tutorials on YouTube? And then you actually tried to model them, you know? Or were you involved in a project at school um, for undergrad, you know? Anything that you did that you learned by yourself, okay? And then walk. If you have any experience, you know, even if it's just a tiny experience, um, working with um, training a model, you know, data science, um, data science, anything, definitely include that as a part of your journey. And then finally, the strongest suit that you have that is most recent is 10 Academy, okay? So you talk about um, your journey at um, 10 Academy and how, you know, you touched a little bit on machine learning, you touched on data engineering, and then you're like, you know what, I think I am more suited towards machine learning or towards data engineering, you know? Basically, you just talk about the, the, the journey, how it started for you, what you did, and then up to the point you are now, right when you're conducting this interview, okay? Now, show what you have learned, okay? Show what you have learned. Now, how do you do this? It's by being very specific. You can say, I learned A-B testing. But remember, when you were giving them a brief overview about yourself, you had already mentioned that. When you're giving your, your journey, you're describing your journey now, it's better to be as specific as possible. Say, during the time at um, 10 Academy, it was through the A-B testing that I did for so-and-so project that I was able to um, come to the conclusion that data science or data engineering or machine learning um, is the field that I would want to focus on or is the speciality that I would want to focus on right now at this stage in my life as it aligns with what I want to do and it aligns with where I see myself in the next in the next two, three years of my career. Okay. So you talk about that. Now um I want to move on to the other possible question you might get. But for this quest question, do we have any comments about it? If we don't have any comments, I mean, we can still type and just say, we don't have any comments, it's clear. So at least I I know that I'm not alone here. And I know that my, my internet is working. I'm not just talking to myself. Yeah, we, we are here, but I, I mean, is uh -huh. it is the question like, where do you see yourself in five, 10 years? Is it related to that? Uh, like describing okay. our journey? Okay, now, um, it's not entirely related, but I cannot say it's um, different very, very, very much. Now, um, this describing your journey, basically, they just want to know what sparked the interest in you deciding to work in this field and what you have done to achieve that you get the skills necessary to work in this field. That's that. Okay, now, whenever you get um, a question asking you where you see yourself in the next three to five years, why do you think they would ask a question like that? Mm, let's talk about that question. Why do you think they would ask a question like that? Not just for Behigo, anyone. Uh, yeah, maybe they want to to see our insights, and uh, they want to see our inclinations, and they want to see if we are a good a good uh, member to their company. Okay, they want to see if you would be a good 
fit okay anyone else um if you can't unmute yourself you could just type in the chat box to see if your career path fits with the company's vision yes that's a very good point um fumbani anyone else okay um so without wasting much time the at the heart of that question okay now whenever someone is going to um employ you okay you're going to be given a contract sometimes the contract is for um one year sometimes six months whatever the case might be you're going to get a contract okay now you are going to put in the effort by doing what is required of you you know and helping the company build themselves up you know achieve whatever goal they're trying to achieve and they in turn okay they're going to um pay you however um the company looks at it as um this way okay they are investing in you okay they are investing in a human being so we really want to know where this person um where this person's future goal meets with our future goal okay so if you believe that in the next five years you want to be a chef do you think um a job that is requiring you to be um an ml an ml engineer do you think they would be willing to employ you even though you have all the necessary skills not really because they are going to invest in you you're going to be an integral part of the of the company you're going to help them work you are going to get better you know things are going to move seamlessly and then two years you're like sayonara everyone i'm going to start off my restaurant not saying we should not have personal dreams and achievements okay that's not what we are saying but whenever they ask that it is because they want to know that your future goals it aligns okay with the goals of the position you're applying for um usually this question honestly um at the end of the day um you just have to tell them that okay in the next five years, I see myself working in this project, or I see myself, I've accomplished this, or I've been able to train this model, or I've done this, looking forward to the next thing that would happen, okay? You don't have to be very specific. Please, do not try to be very, very specific, because no one actually knows what's going to happen in the next five years. It's just where you see yourself. I mean, that vision can change, but they really just want to know your vision, okay? But when they ask about your journey, they want to know what sparked the, 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 the fire in your mind, okay, that um, allowed you to follow this career path, what you did by yourself, what you did in school, any training that you did that helped you get to this point in your journey. So that's what they want to know, okay? Um, so another um, interview question, and this is a question that most likely you're all going to get, especially because you're working with um, machine learning, um, data science and data engineering. OK, now walk me through a project that you have done in two to three minutes. Now, this is a question that it's just a time for you to shine. Really, it's not a point where they're looking for errors or they're looking for flaws no this is they've given you a green light go ahead and just let us know your strong points let us know the best thing that you've done okay now they haven't said walk me through the best project you've done they've left it open walk me through a project that you've done okay so now um the first thing you should do um before going to the interview try to prepare yourself prepare at least two projects that you've done that you're very passionate about okay and think about what was the goal of that project okay now you walk through all of the steps of the project so let's say um what are you guys working on right now um just type in the chat box what you're working on right now or you can just unmute yourself so that we can use that as a concrete example let me just look for the challenge document as you guys are okay 
Okay, thank you, Fumbani. Okay, so casualty. Okay, so now as you're working on that, okay, obviously in the challenge document, they would have given you the goal. Okay, why are you doing this? What do we want to see at the end of this um at the end of this project? Okay, so when you get to the interview and they're like, walk me through a project that you've done, basically always start off with the goal do not say um well i started we um during my time at 10 academy i worked on casualty and um it was a time where i had to train this model and i did abc i had to plot a graph and do all of that that's not a strong way to start you should start this way not saying word for word but just this idea Okay, so um, during week seven um, at 10 Academy, the training that I was a part of, we worked on casualty and that's a project that I really enjoyed doing. The aim of that um, project was to get A, B, C, D. You really lay out the goals, first of all, so they understand what you are trying to achieve. Okay, now, after that, you walk them through the steps. It doesn't necessarily mean the steps that um, was indicated on the challenge document, but this is a time that you have to be personal and show off your strong points. You know, probably you did something extra. So you show them, you walk them through the steps. Okay, now bear in mind, these people already know all of this. So you don't need to um, say, okay, so I did A-B testing and then you say A-B testing is where you do A-B-C-D, okay? They know all of that, but you just need to walk them step by step that, okay, this was the first thing I did. After that, I cleaned the data. After that, I inserted the data. I plotted the graph. I did this. I did that, okay? Now, at some point during that project, you were at a crossroad where you had to make a decision. Definitely let them know because this is also another portion where they're going to see a good skill in you, your decision-making skills, or if you had anticipated a problem even before you got to the middle of the project, you can say, after looking at the data, I anticipated that it would be difficult to arrive at the goal because of ABCD. And then you let them know what you did or what you changed or the steps that you took to prevent the problem you had already anticipated. Okay, now, whatever decision you made, okay, to help you get towards the goal, definitely this is a good time, as long as it helps build you up, as long as it helps sell you, um, sell your points, okay, definitely you need to do that, okay? Now, if you worked with a team, okay, please, there's no harm or no shame in saying that this was a teamwork. If the project that you really like is a project you work together with other people, then definitely let them know that this was not a solo work, okay? This was something that you did together with a team of two or three people. And then you focus on what you specifically did, okay? As a member of the team, and then you try to mention what you did to help other people in the team because now you're killing two birds with one stone, okay? Now you're highlighting your strength, your technical strength, and then you're also saying, you know what? This is my technical strength because as a member of the team, I did A, B, C, D alone specifically. But then I also helped this other member to achieve this. I helped this member to do this. It shows that you can work together as a team, okay? And that is one key thing interviewers are looking for, job um, seekers. Um, that is what they're looking for, okay? Now, at the end of the day, you showcase the end results. You talk about the end results, what you got, the outcome okay was it um the same as what you wanted you know as you had stated in the goal okay were you able to achieve the goal were you close to the goal or you know whatever ha that happened along the way okay um any question on this so far No question on my side. Okay, Behigo is always coming to the rescue. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm doing no question. 
Um, yeah, so this um, tutorial, it has gone way longer, okay? But um, this is, um, okay, Fumbani, no question. Okay, thank you. So these are just some of the um, common interview questions, okay, that you might get, okay? Um, and um, that's it, okay? Um, for the assignment that you're going to do, Thank you. And um, for the assignment that you're going to do, okay, now the rubric, okay, it has been updated and it is very specific. So I would advise that you go through the documents and you look at it. But we're looking for five key things, okay? Um, you have to do a video submission. Definitely the profiles that you're working on, you have to link it there so that we can easily click and check on your profile, okay? And um, you have to prepare a list of questions, you know, you have to give a summary and you have to make a table, okay? You have to fill in a table. So um, it sounds a lot when I've said all those five things, but actually it's not that, um, it's not that unachievable, okay? So um, definitely, um, if you have any further questions or anything, um, you let us know. But one key thing, just try to be confident and be relaxed, okay? Just try to be confident and just try to relax. At the end of the day, um, if you have been selected for the interview, just know that there's a possibility that they really, really, really want you. Okay, so always have that confidence that I have been selected for an interview. It's because they are really interested. They are serious about me. So this is just a time for me to just show them my strength. Okay, show them my growth process and how it aligns with the company's vision, their mission and everything. Okay. Okay, so um, any last question about anything? The room is so quiet. Okay. Uh, Yati on the G classroom. Um, yes. Uh, I don't understand on the Google classroom. The table? Uh, no. Um, the table... Okay. Uh, let me see if I can do this for you guys quickly. Just one minute, guys. Um, just bear with me one minute. Okay. Let me try to present. So, but it's in the assignments document anyway. Okay. Can you guys see what I'm presenting? Uh, I don't think it's working. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, so basically this is the table that I'm talking about, okay? So this is the table I'm talking about. It's inside of your challenge document. Um, so it says we are asking you to select one industry among the three. So ML engineering, ML ops, or data engineering, okay? So um, build up your case for why your experience. So your experience is a combination of educational background, okay, plus 10 academy, plus the projects that you've done, okay? So build up your case for why your experience is a suitable fit for what the job in the industry you chose is looking for. So say, for example, you have chosen um, ML engineering, okay? You just try to complete the, um, the table below, okay? So the job description states, you talk about the years of... Um, um, the years of experience required, okay, I satisfy this in ABCD way, I have so-and-so experience. Um, educational requirements, the job description states that I should have an undergrad, I satisfy it in this way, I recently graduated from college, okay. Um, nationality, right to work, the job description states that it's for people all over the world, remote work is encouraged, you know, I satisfy it in this way, um, I'm available, I've done this online training with 10 Academy, remote work is kind of something that 
that I can do now. Um, expertise requirements, the job states that I should have done, um, A-B testing, I should know how to deploy, whatever, okay? I satisfy this way because through my 10 Academy project that I completed, I did the A-B testing, so on and so forth, okay? So this is the table that we're talking about. And then the last thing, you attach a link to your filled out profile in your document, okay? So, um, yeah, um, what about questions like um, why you want to leave the company you're working in and take a position here? Okay, so now, yeah, this is a good question. Um, this, is a, this is actually a good question. So, why do you want to leave the company you're working for and take a position here? Um, definitely, um, you are going to be honest. But then you really need to align why you want to take um, a position here. You want to align your answer with the company's vision. You can say that I've been working at ABC Factory for a year now, and I have done this and this. I've learned this skill and that skill. But looking at my career path and my career train, I believe that working in a company that is multicultural, that is... Um, um, global like yours that does a lot of um, field testing aligns better with my vision for my life okay so you take the vision of the company you take that is why it's always good to research the company you take one key thing you like about the company and then you say because of this key thing this company does i believe at this point in my life this is something that i also want to do and i can only achieve this by working with this company right now at this point wherever i'm working right now i cannot do this so that's why i want to um work with you guys okay so that's um a simple way to to just answer that question okay um any other question okay okay you guys are welcome all right okay so um i want to believe that we are good um i'm wishing you all the best i see cindy is here do you have any last word anything hi baby kate it's been a long while how are you yeah i'm feeling good <laughs> okay okay um uh, yeah i've been quite so <laughs> yeah it's a lot to take <laughs> okay a milky has typed in a question can you please give us like a list in the document and share it with can you please give us a list in a document and share it with us i think it will help um what list uh milky if you can't talk the process of um Okay, um, I, I'm not sure I follow entirely, but um, if you guys, okay, okay, if you guys want the um, interview tutorial, we can share it with you. Is that what you want? Preparing for an interview, the tutorial document, yes? Oh, okay, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely we'll share with you guys, definitely, okay? I'll I'll do that. Okay, just check in the week seven folder. I'm going to try to post it there. Okay. Okay. So um, Cindy, do you have any last words? I don't know if you're talking because you're muted. Okay. Sorry, I was. Could you ask again? Apologies. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Um, if you have any last words, cause we are done. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Uh, no last words from my end, guys. I'm really looking forward to reading your assignments because this is a very important part towards moving, you know, into the direction of uh, being able to be placed, being job ready and everything else. So I'm excited to read those assignments, to mark them, to provide guidance wherever possible. My DMs are open on Rocket Chat and everything else. So uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. We don't want you guys struggling on your own, okay? So please just keep on keeping on, okay? So uh, right now, coincidentally, is the time for the chit chat session, okay? I'm going to just stop recording and uh guys if you